Hey everyone, and welcome to another weekly art video. I hope you're having an amazing day, and thanks so much for joining me on this one. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing a couple of different color wheel explorations that I did for the more traditional color model with the red, yellow, and blue as primaries, and the newer color model where we're using cyan, magenta, and yellow as our primaries. As I move along sharing my process for these explorations with you, which by the way, I would highly recommend working on this kind of exercise if you're a beginner just getting started with color theory because they are so helpful. But I'll also be sharing my personal insights and opinions as to which color model I think is the correct one. What I personally think about all of the controversy and discussion going on in the art space in relation to which color model or color color wheel is the correct one to work with and which the true primaries are and the reasons why I ultimately feel it doesn't really matter what color model you work with. Let's go ahead and get started with our exploration of these two color models or color wheels, if you will. Over here on the left, I have this color wheel that is more traditional. It is the color wheel that so many of us are taught in elementary and secondary school or even high school and even in art school. This is the more traditional one where I'm going to be using red, yellow, and blue as my primaries. This is just a six part color wheel. So in between, I'm going to be creating the second secondaries, which are purple, green, and orange, by mixing the primaries as needed. And over here on the right, I'm going to be exploring the CMY. For this color wheel, I'm going to be using cyan, magenta, and yellow as my three primaries, and I'm going to be creating the secondaries in between by mixing these colors together as needed. In this video, I'm going to be focusing more on the exercises on hand and seeing what happens in a tangible, practical way when I mix these colors together and the observations that we can see in the final color wheels. And I really don't want to spend too much time explaining scientific discoveries made throughout history, how these discoveries and technological advances have impacted the art space and the tools that we use as artists and how we create art. I will be leaving links below to a few different very thorough videos in which a lot of this is explained in case you'd like to learn more. But just to explain, I think some of the main points here in a very quick kind of nutshell way, the reason why we see different colors is because of light. Light has different wavelengths and different wavelengths have different colors. Different wavelengths bounce off these different objects around us and reach our eyes. Light travels into our eyes, reaches the retina, and when these cells in our eyes detect that light, they send signals to our brain brains, and that's how we perceive different colors. It was Isaac Newton in the late 1600s that through his experiments with light and color and shining light through prisms, discovered the color spectrum. The color spectrum starts with red and ends with purple. And the color spectrum is a linear arrangement. So think rainbow. And Newton was the first person who actually molded that linear spectrum into a circle and started theorizing about what the primary colors were, which would allow you to create different colors. And this is how he came up with the first color wheel. His theories, of course, have been added to, they have been corrected throughout time, and there is still so much that we don't know about light and color. But because color is such an essential part of art, you can see how Newton's discoveries proved to be very beneficial. Artists started making use of the color wheel in order to create the colors that they needed throughout the painting process. But not only this, because of the information that color wheels gave them about color relationships, they were able to choose color schemes or groups of colors that would work very well together in an artwork. Color wheels enabled artists to not only know what colors they need to mix together to create a new color, but also to plan and prepare specific groups of colors that would lead to color integration and color harmony. And this all has to do with the color's location in that wheel. This is where analogous colors, complementary colors, triads, etc. come in. And no matter what color wheel or color model it is that you decide to learn from or work with, 
because of the circular arrangement, you're going to be able to really advance your knowledge of color theory and take your skills to the next level when it comes to using color in a tangible way via creating art. All this said, even though Newton's discoveries about light and color have really helped artists, light is not paint. When it comes to light, if you combine all of these colors together, you get white. But when you mix all of these different colors of paint together, you're going to get black, brown, gray, or whatever the case may be. There is even ongoing debate out there about what a primary color even means. Well, even if you remove a hierarchy when it comes to the colors in the color wheel, there is still so much to take away from the color wheel and this arrangement of colors in a circular way. As time has moved on and with technological advances, we've been able to produce more colors with pigments and dyes and different materials. 40,000 years ago, when first artists were inventing pigments to work with, they were using materials like soil, animal fat, burnt charcoal, and chalk. Creating different paint colors was hard and they had only a limited amount of hues that they could create. So they had a very basic palette of around five different colors like red, yellow, brown, black, and white. And over time, with technological advances and discoveries of new materials that could be used to create different paint colors, it makes total sense that artists are going to make use of a new color model that helps expand and better use that larger, more ample range of colors that we now have access to. And this doesn't change the fact that artists throughout history have been able to create amazing looking artwork using the resources that they had on hand and even older versions of the color wheel. All of these things have created such a heavy controversy in the art space that oftentimes leads to artists and art appreciators to constantly argue about which color wheel is the correct one or the appropriate one to use or which are the true primaries or whatever the case may be. In my personal opinion, they are both correct. They both have their pros and cons. I will say that it is becoming more and more important that you know about this color model if you don't know enough about it already. The reason why I think all of this discourse and constant argument ultimately does not matter is because A, it's ultimately going to depend on your personal tastes, your personal color choices. So for example, something that I can tell you for myself is that I don't like using magenta. I don't like using purple. Those are colors that honestly, they're not my style and I don't enjoy them very much. I enjoy the colors that this particular model enables me to create. Whereas other people who like purples, magentas, and very bright, uh, maybe even unnatural blues, could love this color model over here. People who love very saturated colors, vivid colors, could really, really love using this color model over here. The other reason why I ultimately feel that it does not matter is because so many people, especially beginners, get trapped with color and color theory, so much so that they overwhelm themselves, they overcomplicate the learning process for themselves, when in my personal opinion, what they should be doing is simplifying their understanding of color as much as possible and actually using colors to create visual compositions, not to stay in this kind of exercise for years and years. If you're able to create great looking landscapes, great looking still life compositions, great looking animal paintings, whatever the case may be that you love painting and your color use is controlled and is leading to quality results, then why does it matter so much which color model you're using. What I'm getting at is what ultimately matters is that you're able to create great looking artwork by combining and mixing together colors in an effective way that is your style, that transmits the mood message idea or story that you're wanting to transmit, that shows great color harmony and all of these things. That for me is what's most important. So yes, absolutely, 100%, I believe in making time to learn about the fundamentals and color and color theory is an art fundamental that we should spend time on, but don't get stuck there because remember that you're ultimately learning about color in order to put that knowledge to use to create drawings or paintings. 
And the ultimate reason why I feel that it doesn't matter is because, in my opinion, split primary color palettes are the way to go. A split primary color palette is when you have a warm and cool version of each primary on your color palette so that you can create any color that you want, meaning if you arm yourself or prepare a split primary color palette, you're good to go. You're gonna be able to paint pretty much anything that you want and you're really not going to need anything else. And you definitely can bring in convenience colors into your split primary palette such as neutrals, maybe browns, grays, or even specific secondary colors that you love, like a particular green that you love, or whatever it is that works great for you and the subject that you love drawing or painting. This exercise is awesome for people getting started. It gives us a chance to practice our color mixing. It gives us a chance to explore the differences between the colors that we can create with both color models. And if you want to make this an exploration of warm and cool colors, you can also do that. So let's get started. I'm going to get started with filling in this more traditional color wheel that so many of us learn. I've already picked out my yellow, my red, and my blue that I'm gonna be using for this color wheel. The blue that I'm going to be using is ultramarine blue. The yellow that I'm going to be using is cadmium yellow medium. And the red that I'm going to be using is cadmium red light. So I'm going to go ahead and start filling in my primary colors that I have pointed out here with a little cross. I'm going to start with the yellow because it's the lightest color. So there's my yellow. I'm gonna move on to the red now. I made sure to pick warm colors for this RYB color wheel here. All of these are warm primaries or the warmest primaries that I had available in my St. Petersburg set anyway. Removing all of that red from my paintbrush bristles and I'm gonna go ahead and paint in my blue, ultramarine blue. All right, so those are my three primary colors here. I'm gonna go ahead and start creating my secondaries with these three colors. So let's start with the orange. I'm gonna mix together cadmium red light and my cadmium yellow medium. I will say as a note here, I try to stay away from using cadmium colors when I am creating a more final piece because of their opaque qualities. So oftentimes, if we're not careful, we can create mud very easily with cadmium colors because of their opaque qualities. Because this is a color wheel exercise, I just wanna use this paint that I have, you know? And I still think they are beautiful and that you can make them work if you're careful. Okay, so here's my orange. So I went to art school and I studied graphic design and I was taught the CMYK model for printing, which printers use. Of course, with printers, you have the K, which is key, and that is just the black. We were also taught the RGB model, and those are the colors that you see for screens, TVs, computers, that kind of thing. And then when it came to painting classes, I was taught the traditional red, yellow, blue primary uh, color wheel. Here goes the purple. So you can see how this purple is more muted. It's very dark. And I can totally see how if you like very bright, more magenta-y purples, 
then maybe this isn't the purple that you want and you would struggle to create the purple that you want. For me, I love this purple. This is really the, the kind of purple that I like. I don't really like magenta -y purples. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start creating my green. So for my green, I need yellow and I need blue. Let me clean out my yellow here. Okay, so before moving on to the other color model, I'm gonna go ahead and try to create a brown using these three primaries and I'm gonna swatch it out over here for you. Okay, so here is a nice chocolatey brown. So there are a couple of different brown hues that I can create with these three primaries. Okay, now that I have filled in this first color wheel, I'm gonna go ahead and change my water. It's very important that we're working with clean water when we're working on color wheel exercises. And I'm also going to clean out my palette so that I can make sure that I'm working with clean colors in my next one. All right, let's get started with the CMY color wheel over here. And for this one, for my cyan, I have chosen phthalo blue. For my magenta, I have chosen quinacridone rose. And for my yellow, I have chosen cadmium lemon. And for this color wheel, not only am I going by the CMY model, but I also made sure that all of these three are cooler colors than the three primaries that I chose for this color wheel. Why? Because I wanted to make this an exercise about color temperature as well. And the reason why is because I wanna bring this all back to the split primary color wheel, where remember, as I mentioned before, this is a color wheel or a color palette that you create by making use of a warm and cool version of each primary. This is cadmium lemon, so again, cadmiums are going to have certain opaque qualities to them, which you may or may not want to use for an actual full piece. That is up to you. Not that you can't, it's just some artists prefer to use completely transparent colors in their paintings. It's just important that you know the colors qualities when you're going to be using them so that you avoid accidents and muddiness and stuff like that. I'm gonna keep my color arrangements exactly the same for this one. So here's my yellow. You can definitely see how this is a cooler yellow compared to this one. Rinsing out my paintbrush very well. Going in with my Quinn Rose, which I am using as my magenta, and I'm gonna add it over here in the position that I added my red on this other color wheel. So this, for me, this is just for my personal tastes, I honestly don't like this color. The only reason why I have this full pan is because it came in my St. Petersburg set and the reason why I've included a Quinn Rose in my other set from Daniel Smith is because the tube of paint just came in my set as well and I just wanted to fill in that space. It's definitely not a color that I would buy or invest in if I were buying individual tubes of paint. All right, so there's the magenta. I'm gonna go ahead and allow that to dry and I'm going to paint in the blue. Remove all of this color from my paintbrush bristles and I'm gonna paint in the blue. Cyan. I'm trying to paint in these colors. When you're painting a color wheel, try your best to use all of your different colors that you're creating or filling in these spaces with, with the same amount of um, 
paint to water. So with the same paint to water ratio or as close as possible so that some of your spaces don't appear uh, too different in terms of paleness due to water content being very different. Cleaning this out. So now I'm gonna be creating my secondaries using these three primaries. So let's work on this color right here first, which would be the orange. Mixing a little bit of this Quinn Rose into my yellow. So there is my orange, had a nice little bloom happening there. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the purple. Way too much paint there. And there is the purple. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mix my green using my cadmium lemon and my phthalo blue. So I'm gonna add in a little cadmium lemon into this blue, very bright green. Very, very different from my green over here. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and create a brown using these three colors for my CMY color wheel. So I'm gonna, this is a purple right here, which already has blue and uh, Quinn Rose. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of yellow, which is the missing primary. Let's see if I can create a slightly different brown or gray. Okay, so two nice browns that I was able to create there by mixing together my yellow, cyan, and magenta. So here are my results. And if you'd like to create a tertiary color wheel, meaning a 12 part color wheel where you have the mixtures of the primaries and secondaries in between, meaning yellow green, yellow orange, uh, red orange, red purple, blue purple, and blue green, you can go ahead and create a color wheel design that has 12 pie pieces instead of six. So I noticed that over here, my purple is a lot brighter, a lot more saturated, cleaner looking maybe. This green is also much brighter and more unnatural looking than this one over here. So in this color wheel over here, this purple is darker, it's more muted, and so is my green. This green over here looks a lot mossier, a lot more kind of towards the olive green. This orange though turned out to be brighter than this one created with this specific combination of yellow and magenta. So very big differences between these two color wheels, but again, the specific colors that I use for each of these which in this case, I made sure to use warm colors for my primaries, and in this one, I chose cooler colors for my primaries, had a great impact on the results of my secondaries. Here are a few examples of warm and cool yellows, warm and cool reds, and warm and cool blues. This is phthalo blue, and this is cadmium lemon, which I used over here. The only color that is different is this one. Over here, I made sure to use a color that was more going towards the magenta side, and this is a little bit more red, but it's still a cool red, whereas this is a warmer red that is leaning more towards the orange side. And here's my split primary color wheel exercise where I used a warm and cool of each of my primaries, and then created the secondaries in between by mixing together warm yellow and warm red, cool red and warm blue, and cool blue and cool yellow right here to create my greens. 
So here are my two color explorations finished. And as I said in the beginning of this video, when I went to art school, I was taught this color wheel in painting courses and painting classes, more like fine arts type of thing. And I also learned this color wheel plus the K for key or black for printed media, where you're gonna be using inks and dyes. And there is also the RGB color model, and that relates more to electronic devices, anything that you see on screen, TVs, computers, all of that is RGB. I know that this can feel confusing or even overwhelming when you're getting started with color theory. You want to know what's right, what's wrong, so that you can just learn what actually works and what color wheel to work with. This is more so the old-timey way of uh, learning about color and understanding color, which works for a lot of artists. And this is the newer way of understanding color. And it also allows you to create more vibrant colors and colors that you might not easily be able to create with this color model over here. In my opinion, people make things a little bit too complicated and spend too long arguing and creating controversy about what's right, what's wrong. But honestly, having a basic understanding of color goes a long way. And then as you move forward in your art journey, discovering what you personally enjoy, you can create your own color palettes to work with and use your knowledge of color and color mixing and color harmony to create amazing looking artwork. For me, the proof is in the pudding. Are you able to create great looking artwork with whatever kind of color wheel or color model it is that you choose to go with? That is ultimately what matters. I mean, I hope that we are trying to learn and understand color in order to create art, not to spend two, three years taking in more and more information about color, overwhelming ourselves, never getting to painting, and spending this entire time just creating pretty looking color wheels and color charts. So these are just my personal opinions. I am very neutral about the whole thing. There is a lot to learn and take from both types of color models. And I think that ignoring one or the other would ultimately be a mistake because the more knowledge that we have, the better equipped we're ultimately going to be. All right, you guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. I really hope that it was helpful and that I've inspired you to do some color explorations of your own. I really want to encourage encourage you to explore different primaries and not be afraid to make your own color choices, especially after you have understood basic color theory and have gained a certain amount of practice with your medium. Don't be afraid to make choices of your own that are going to lead to the results that you enjoy. I'm way less interested in the particular color model or color wheel that you decide to use, and I'm way more interested in the final results or artwork that you create. All right, you guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it helpful. And if you did, pretty, pretty please, make sure to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps support the work that I am doing here on YouTube and helps others get to know about my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell so that you can be notified of when I share my new videos, which happens every single week. Have a beautiful rest of the day and see you soon. Bye guys.